First off, apologies for taking so long to get this up. As many of you know, I have a very hectic work schedule. So this is part two of my series looking into alleged photographic examples of the alien race known as the Tall Whites. If you'd like to watch part one first, uh, a link to that will be on the end screen to this video as well as in the description. Also in the description, you can find a link to the video in which L.A. Marzulli and George discuss this photograph over to my right, um, which is also the photograph that we will be discussing in this video. I can say with a fair degree of certainty that I have enough information to debunk this photograph. And once you see the information that I'm gonna share with you in this video, I think you'll agree. So, without further ado, here we go. I was a little skeptical of George's account from the get-go, and um, when I saw the image itself, I noticed a few things that made me even more skeptical. So I want to start this video off just by pointing out a few of what I would consider to be red flags that cast a little bit of doubt on George's story. I don't consider these to necessarily be debunking points, uh, just red flags, that's all. So your father and your uncle are out doing shriving, and you say 50 to 100 yards away, but the photograph, they're much closer. So how do you account for that? I don't, I, I'm just going by what he told What me. he told you, uh, okay. You know, uh, so this is clearly a discrepancy, however, I can think of a few perfectly valid reasons for this. For one, the biggest thing that came to mind is, well, was George's father using a camera with a zoom lens? If that's the case, then, you know, we don't have any problem here at all. But something about this, though, something about this still strikes me as a little fishy. Next, I'd like to point out a few things that I noticed about the photograph itself. It's not a crystal clear image, but even so, it's clear enough to where I feel that there are certain details that we should be able to pick out from it that for whatever reason we can't and i feel like the image is clear enough to where we should be able to clearly discern those details for example the head we can barely make out facial features granted if this is an alien which by the way it's not if it is an alien sure i've never seen a tall white before Maybe they could have less pronounced facial features than Homo sapien sapien, but even so, my gut is just telling me that something is a little bit off with this. Moving down to the torso. Now, if you zoom in here, and if you look really closely, there's something very, very peculiar about the texture of the torso. These Anomalies within the torso almost look like holes. Look at this. You can sort of see the background color through this one hole right here. So that makes me wonder if this is in fact a hole. And moving down, this is the first thing that I noticed by the way. Look at the hands. This image I feel like this image is clear enough to where we should be able to make out fingers. Because really the only other explanation is that they're all wearing these mitten type gloves, which to me, 
it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, you'll see this a lot more clearly in other pictures that I'm going to show you, but I just want to draw your attention to this area right here. It's kind of hard to make out from this image, but this is actually a mound where these plants are. The ground is raised there. Like I said, that'll be more clear in subsequent images. And uh, just a little reminder here, George mentioned that his father took these photographs somewhere in the desert, the you know, southwestern region, perhaps around New Mexico, I think. One of my awesome subscribers, Debbie Albuquerque, New Mexico, left a pretty interesting comment that I wanted to read. Picture at about 625, which is this image right here. Uh, should have hills, mountains, sky, clouds, something, but nothing. Looks a bit foggy, but fog is incredibly rare in the deserts of New Mexico. I thought this was a very telling comment because, well, Debbie is from New Mexico, and she knows that area really well. I can't really speak to exactly what she said because I've only ever flown over New Mexico. I've never actually set foot there, but if she's telling me that the landscape looks off, then, you know, I'm inclined to take her word at that she lives there. I didn't mention this earlier, but the image that you're looking at is actually a screenshot from L.A. Marzulli's, a cropped screenshot from L.A. Marzulli's video. But I did a Google reverse image search and I got some interesting results. This image right here, the internet is littered with this image. This is all over, just all kinds of paranormal sites and you know there's various paranormal entities that sites claim that these things are but point is this is all over the web now to point out this is technically a color image well this is a little uh one more possible discrepancy with what george was saying although i do think that it is very possible that this image could have, the original could have been a black and white and somebody edited color into this image. Now, it is really, really easy to take a color image and turn it into a black and white image. It is possible to take a black and white image and put color into it. It's a little bit trickier and it takes a little bit of know-how. It takes a lot of know-how if you want to make it look convincing. So this image right here, my initial reaction was, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this could be the original. It may not. I'm not sure. Well, at least in that point in my research, I wasn't sure. I'm kind of going chronologically here. I actually spent two all-nighters working on this video. One of those all-nighters was just doing image, reverse image searches to try to find variations of George's image, and I found quite a few. Look at this one. A couple things to point out from this image. First of all, you can clearly tell that this is another variation of the exact same image that uh, George sent to LA. Secondly, you can see the mound here a little bit better, but you'll see it even better in later images. Just want to point out that it's there. Third, lo and behold, we seem to have a lot of vegetation. When I noticed this, I was thinking, desert? This is looking a lot less like a desert, to me at least. Now, I'm not saying that it's not possible to have parts of a desert look like this. I've never lived in a desert. Maybe some of you out there who do live around deserts can tell me if you can see scenes like this, but 
The point that I'm simply making is that all of a sudden we see a lot more vegetation, trees, grass, so it certainly looks less desert-like. At least, to me it does. Okay, I'm breaking chronological order a little bit, but take a look at this. Little spoiler alert here. I actually came across this image after I positively identified exactly what we're looking at. But I just want to point out that this is clearly a color image and the detail is really, really good, much better than the black and white or the artificially colored looking one. And look at all the green. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't looking like a desert before, now it's looking even less like a desert. Again, I'm not saying that it's impossible that you could have a desert area looking like this. But I think everyone would agree it's looking less and less like a desert. At this point in my research, I am suspecting more and more that these three things are not living beings, but rather they are some sort of art, uh, some sort of sculpture or statues. But that's still a guess on my part. And I won't be satisfied until I know exactly what this is, what it's called, and exactly where it is. That's what I spent my second all-nighter on. All points mentioned up to this point in the video have been what I consider to be red flags. Now let's move to the definitive debunking. The image George sent to LA is of a monument in Novi Sad, Serbia. This monument commemorates a massacre that took place there during the Second World War in which three to four thousand civilians lost their lives at the hand of the Hungarian armed forces. This is the name of the monument. I don't want to try to pronounce it because I'm not going to do it justice, but here's the name of it. Uh, you can look it up if you like. This will also be in the description, the name of it. The three figures are extremely tall, as you can see from the person standing between the two holding hands. Earlier in the video, I pointed out that the three figures were standing on a mound. Well, you can see that mound much more clearly in some of these photographs. You can also see much more clearly that these figures do in fact have holes in them. As a monument is meant to commemorate those who died in a massacre, I have to wonder if these holes symbolize the mortal injuries suffered by the victims. Again, we have another person in the frame to show the massive scale of the three figures here. I'll include links to these images as well as GPS slash Google Earth coordinates in the description, as well as sources giving information about the monument. So, with what I've shown you in this video, I believe we can all agree that George's story is utterly and completely debunked. Now, in a couple of my previous videos, I mentioned that I'm a big fan of Marzulli's work, and that is still very much the case. To that end, I want to make a few points in his defense. First off, even the savviest, most diligent, most eagle-eyed among us are going to get it wrong sometimes. Perhaps nowhere is this more apparent than amongst those who research fringe, Fordian, supernatural, or otherwise paranormal topics. My second point is this. I cannot stress how tricky it was for me to positively identify this. Granted, I am a pretty good sleuther, and a little bit of luck may have been involved, and of course, well, I'm sure insomnia helped a little bit. The point is, I still have a very high opinion of L.A. Marzulli, and I'm still a huge fan of his work. Special thanks to L.A. Marzulli, 
and to Debbie Albuquerque, New Mexico, and also special thanks to Richard Interplane, who composed the piece entitled Holes Apart, which has quickly become one of my favorite compositions to use. And lastly, thanks to you for watching this video. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.